This is Dr. Stephen Lowe. I'm here with Ryan Listerman and Skylar Book. We want to welcome you to Adam Revival. And today what we're going to do is we're going to interview Skylar uh, about his testimony in Christ and his faith walk. So I'm going to go ahead and let Ryan uh, take, take, uh, take the reins from here. Go ahead, Ryan. Well, thank you for uh, joining us today, Skylar. Oh, glad as to be part here. Of this, yeah, as part of this ongoing series, we've been bringing on you know fellow brothers in Christ and uh, just getting them to share, you know, your, your testimony. We feel that the testimony is one of those things that kind of helps create, you know, Steve likes to say it, it kind of builds the case for uh, case for God, you know, our own empirical individual empirical evidence. It's qualitative data. It's qualitative sure. data. So we're collecting the data here. Well, um, so why don't you just go ahead and get right into it? When did you, when did you, um, begin following God? Well, it's kind of a funny question for me. Um, there's never been a time in my life that I would have told you I didn't. Okay. But there's certainly been times in my life where I wasn't, maybe just didn't know it, if that makes sense. Um, my, uh, my dad was uh, Lutheran. My mom was Catholic. And um, so I was baptized Lutheran, you know. Um, and then Early on, Dad wasn't into church, so Mom took us to Mass and, um, you know, went to catechism until I was uh, 10 or 12. Um, but then uh, we went to vacation Bible school at a non-denominational church around the corner. And Dad really liked that, so we, he started wanting to go to church. We started going there and um, went there a few years, um, changed churches a little while later. Uh, I was about 15. We started going to a Lutheran church. Um, it was never... Uh, we were never members. I never did any of the initiation rites or anything. But um, but we went pretty consistently for about the next ten years. And um, so I was a you know in a teenager, uh, early twenties, my youth, if you will. Um, and that was probably when I was the furthest away from God in my life. Um, went to church every week, but uh, we would go to Saturday night service, and um, then I would leave and go out and you know uh, get hammer drunk and chase skirts, you know. Um, yeah. Living the normal life, if uh, if the you world, follow me. The world, the exactly, yeah. right, right, and so um, teens, early adult years. Yeah, yep. Okay. And um, I was kind of just doing that, and uh, <laughs> had a had a girlfriend that uh, one of the ones that everybody knew was bad. <laughs> that, uh, but you know, I was gonna led you astray. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and um, you know, everybody knew she was terrible, but me, and she broke my heart, anyways. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, that really got me. I told you so. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> um, made me think that my ways, my way didn't work out. My way is not working for me. Um, and that really got me interested in wanting to know more about, you know, what I claimed I believed. And even I, I knew I wasn't really trying hard. Yeah, sure. I knew that yeah. I was just going through the motions at church. And, and it's funny how a lot of people, a lot of people, know are, are feel exactly what you're explaining right now. They're just there. They're yeah. Just going through the yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I started listening to the um, the local Christian radio station quite a bit, and um, uh, <laughs> had another bad girlfriend broke my heart when I was about twenty five, and um, that really got me uh, listening. Like I said, at the local station, and um, there was a a preacher on there who I really liked, um, a local local guy, and um, I decided I want to go check his church out. Um, it was a you know, a, I guess you could call it a mega church. It wasn't like Huge, huge, but like, you know, 1,500, 2,000 seats, you know. It's a big church. Yeah, good That's size, big, definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, and uh, I went there and, um, you know, got on real good. Um, learned a lot because that, uh, that was really what happened is I, um, I kept uh, messing my own life up, I guess. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, too many bottles and, well, striking out while I was chasing skirts mostly. Yep. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, At least you weren't chasing dudes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, none of that. None of that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, so I just really wanted to learn more, and I learned a lot there, and it was good for me. Um, I uh, got involved that's... a little bit in the uh, young adult ministry, and that's actually where I met my wife. Um, and um, you know, it was real good. Um, went there about ten years, and um, uh, while I was going there, I, I kept learning, and um. Long story short, I more or less uh, read my way into uh, Catholicism. Um, uh, I kind of was just 
I kind of found myself going through the motions a little bit again. Yeah. Um, I wasn't living so messed up anymore. Um, but I was going there, um, kind of believing a little bit different stuff, I guess, um, for you know, the last couple of years anyways. Um, and the lockdowns in 2020 is really what kind of pushed me over the edge because, um, boy, it really put a bad taste in my mouth when, um, when everybody went along with it. Yeah. Yeah. You, um, yeah, yeah. you definitely, uh, I've, most people I knew, you know, you, you, you had a hard, probably the hardest time with the lockdowns. I mean, I, yeah, I, mean, I really, I mean, that yeah. really struggled with that. That really, yeah. I was like bunker down, hunker down. When are they kicking my door in and hauling me off to do, a camp? You, you, you know, <laughs> like I was you, freaked out. Do you think that that as, you know, as a result of those lockdowns, your your faith in God was strengthened or 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 tested or even doubted at, at times? And um, I don't think I don't think I ever doubted. Um, it was definitely tested, and through it all, definitely strengthened. Okay, definitely. Okay, okay. definitely. Um, because uh, I, I came to the point where like I was saying I was kind of freaking out because yeah, sure. see. I never bought into any of the COVID scare right. at yeah. all. Yeah. Like none of it. Yeah. Like I, I, I think a lot of believers can say the same. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Like I wasn't scared of anything. Right. I wasn't scared yeah. of getting sick. I wasn't scared of anybody I know getting sick. Yep. Nothing. Yep. Um. So the way the world was just really freaked me out. Yeah. Um. It was a scary time. That's there's no doubt about. But yeah. It. yeah. Um. But uh, so what we, what we were doing? We uh, I was started watching the uh, mass on EWTN mm. at uh, the eight a.m. Um, on Sundays, actually that, that Easter, cause everything was shut down mm-hmm. at Easter, um, got my family up and we, uh, got on our, you know, our Easter clothes, you know, suit and tie and you know, everything yeah. and, uh, sat on the couch and watched mass on TV. It's weird, but at least you did it. You <laughs> yeah. Know? Cause I had to do something. It's weird times. I was like, it's Easter, dude. Yeah. It's weird yeah. times, man. Um, and, uh, then we snuck out of the house cause I didn't know how many of my neighbors felt about it. Yeah. Uh, we snuck out the back door and <laughs> went over, uh, went over to my mom and dad's and had ham. Yeah, there you go. Um, but um, so, you, the, so you so you say your faith as a result, you you would say your your faith, right? In God was because true. Um, I kind of I got okay with, and you know you you still struggle with this, but I got okay with the idea of, um, if they come and round me out, round yeah. me up, and put yeah. me in a camp, yeah, uh, you know, like. Uh, Maximilian Colby or, or Bonhoeffer or something yeah, crazy, being okay with it. It's a crazy, you know, thought. like I uh, wouldn't be happy about it, of course, sure. but, sure. but so, um, deciding I could handle that. To maybe back it up here though, because it kind of listening to your story so far, it kind of sounds like you have um, a few different seasons. You had your um, just being Absolutely. A, a child, um, and then you mm-hmm. had kind of your um, you know, adolescent, you know, your young adult kind of turbulent times. And it seems like maybe the time you were about to meet your wife uh, was kind of when you made a, a drastic change. But then it sounds like you kind Definitely. of, you were, you were sort of in a, still a baby Christian mode for, for those years until maybe 2020. Does that seem, sound about right for your kind of, you know, or you um, it, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe like a little a, before like 2020, like but, but warm, yes, lukewarm Christian, um, like just didn't, you know, didn't, uh, didn't know one thing from another, you know? Yeah. Uh, didn't, yeah. didn't, I was learning. I didn't, sure. didn't, didn't know what I was talking about. Didn't know what I was doing. Um, do you, um, do you look back at, at, to when you, to when you met your wife and even before, do you look back and attribute the meeting of your wife and maybe the road that, that led you to her. Do you, do you view that as, as a divine? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, there was a time, um, when I was, uh, well, I had an apartment anyways. Um, when I first moved out of the house and, um, I actually remember uh, praying over and over again, um, for God to help me find a good wife. Mm. And it, it, it took a few years after that, yeah. but, um, I always wanted somebody better than me. More men need to do that though. More men need, that's Absolutely. a great point. More men need to pray on their faith and pray, pray, you know, for the right, you know, uh, partner, the white wife, I shouldn't say partner. That term is, has been corrupted, but yeah. the, the, what the, the right wife, uh, and unfortunately in society, we have dudes, you know, not praying to God, but just serving Satan and then ending up with a dude. So that's, yeah, right. that's, that's the outcome there. <laughs> that's what happens when Jesus is involved. Yeah. So. And in, in our day, that was actually scary. These days, I'm well, not sure well, they'd be scary and, and, anymore. And in, our, in our day, we, we, you know, we could call it out for what it was. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, all right, go ahead, Ryan. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of getting the timeline down here, and it, it, and it makes sense. It seems like 2020 was, especially for the um, 
you know, maybe American Christian was a very, uh, mm. uh, kind of, uh, we either, you know, act or get off the pot type situation where it was like, you know, we, 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 we seen the enemy's plan unfold in front of our mm. eyes. And I, I know for me, I got more serious with, with, with God. Absolutely. You know, in 2020, I mean, the yeah, 2019, I was yeah. 2019 was leading up to it. Cause that's when, again, I, I met my now wife. Uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, 2020 was, uh, very much a, a challenge that, uh, you know, like you got, got me kind of focused on what happens if this happens, you know, what, what do we do if, if the, if the, the prophecies unfold, you know, how are we going to right. act? Right. Right. I mean, we're living through the long defeat, right? I mean, yeah. uh, uh, there, there's times when things are better, but overall the, the, you know, the end of time accumulates with with us losing right before we win yeah well i mean we don't win till he comes back and it gets as bad as the, the, the it gets darkest right before the dawn yeah, yeah. so and there's there's a lot of people who think that we're theologically in line with you know the end times and um i can't call them crazy for that at right. this point you know what i'm yeah. saying yeah. so uh, there's things that that you know when i read revelation there's things i believe that haven't occurred yet um so, but I think we are well on our way to, to, you know, the prophecy being fulfilled. I, this is kind of off track, but I kind of want to go back to what you said, Ryan, talking about, you know, a lot of talking about Christianity through, uh, you know, the, the, the pandemic. And, uh, there was a lot of growth, uh, for Christianity through the pandemic. Um, people were scared and a lot of people turned to God as a result of that. Now, you know, I don't know if you watched uh, Mr. Tate's. Actually, I know you watched Mr. Tate's interview with uh, the Christian fellow there because you sent it to me, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was watching that, and you know, I look Andrew Tate. It, I'm not. I, I'm not going to say I, I. I don't. I don't dislike the guy. I actually can appreciate him for what he is. Um, I think he's off kilter on a lot of things. I think he's very worldly in a lot of things. But as far as his message on masculinity and the purpose of masculinity, I think he's spot on in a lot of regards. But, you know, he, Andrew Tate has recently converted to Islam and he touched base on that. And he kept saying when he was questioned on it, Islam is the, the fastest growing religion and blah, blah, blah. He never said why he went to Islam or talked about the tenets of Islam. And this and that. He just kept echoing, Islam is the fastest growing religion and yada, yada. And I'm like, well, no, it, it, it is on paper, right? It is on paper. But when you look at it, Islam is only the fastest growing religion due to birth rate. Okay. Yeah. We have more Muslims populating than any other, you know, sect of people on the face of the earth. And you're not, you don't really have a choice when you're born into a Muslim household. You're just a Muslim. So that's a falsity for Andrew Tate to say that Islam is the fastest growing religion, you know, implying that, that people are converting to Islam. That's not true. And I just wanted right, to touch base on that. It's a bit of a bait and that. switch. It is. It's, yeah. it's, it's nonsense. Right. It's nonsense. So I, just, I, I know I went off on a rabbit hole there, but it needed to be said. Like, that's a lie. That's not true. There's no foundation to that whatsoever outside of birth rate. 